Last month, The Rise of Skywalker dropped in theaters, so today I'm gonna stop and rank all 11 live-action Star Wars final battles from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of all 11 Star Wars final battles. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list, and I would love to see yours. As I go into this, I'm basing it both on the action, the spectacle, how memorable it is, as well as kind of the character moments, the story, how it all ties together. That's what I'm looking at. One final thing before we get started, you can pick up a number of the shirts that I wear in my videos, including my I Talk Movies Too Much shirts in my merch store. The link is down below in the description. Every month, there's always sales going on, like 35% off, $13 t-shirts. Check out the link down below, see if there's something you're interested in, and let's get started. Coming in in last place is Solo. Now, I enjoy this movie enough, but it's not a movie that has a particularly memorable final battle third act inside of it. Kind of relies more on trickery inside of it. You do get a fight with Dryden Voss. You do have a little bit of kind of the Old West duel that happens inside of it, but none of it is super memorable. Even kind of the big character moments and twists where the girl leaves him behind, we knew that was going to happen. We know he doesn't end up with her. We get a cameo from Darth Maul. So there's some things that are a little bit interesting, but when you think big, epic, memorable Star Wars third acts, that's simply not what this movie offers. And number 10 is The Rise of Skywalker. Unfortunately, our final, final battle inside of the Skywalker saga was a bit of a letdown for me, largely because it felt like everything was so rushed inside of it and nothing paid off as much as it should have. You have a massive space battle, but it just felt like a lot of visual noise, even when they do kind of the Calvary comes in rescue sequence, ripped out straight out of the third third act of Endgame with the portal sequence, it doesn't pay off the way it's supposed to because it wasn't set up as well as it should have been earlier inside of the film. It's kind of fun to watch Finn run on a space horse on top of a Star Destroyer. That's kind of cool and seeing Sith Troopers, kind of cool, but that's what everything in this final battle is. It's kind of cool in kind of a letdown at the same time. You also have this big massive showdown between Rey and Palpatine that's not really all that much of a big showdown between the two of them, as once again, we're ripping off Endgame with this, <laughs> her saying, I am all the, the Jedi, and it just didn't pay off the way it should. Even we get Ben Solo on his redemption tour, and his little battle there is very cool, for the 10 seconds that it lasts. And that's what the whole thing felt like to me. Like, oh, this could be cool. Nope, not so much. And to top it all off, you have a section where Palpatine gains a bunch of power, shoots lightning up into the sky, taking out all the ships, making him way overpowered and nullifying the actions of other people. So I wasn't someone that hated this movie, but I was very much disappointed by what ended up happening in the final act. Then we have Attack of the Clones. Now I've said in my previous rankings that this is my least favorite of the live action Star Wars movies. And the third act kind of lives up to that as well. While you do have this big battle involving droids and all the Jedi showing up, to me, it's just too much CGI, too much happening all at once that I can't fully appreciate the spectacle and the size of everything happening. There's no shortage of action. It's just not action that gets me all that excited inside of it. Then we have the clones versus the droids, which story-wise is an important moment, but it doesn't feel as important to me as I feel it probably should. All of it leading to a lightsaber battle with Anakin and Obi-Wan versus Dooku that has always underwhelmed me once again because it's so short and done so much in close-ups. Yoda with the lightsaber, kind of cool, kind of a fun twist. Feels a little out of place to me. It's always a bit of a distraction to see him flipping around like that. But just in general, because the movie itself, I don't did a, think did a good job in the first two acts building to a satisfying conclusion. When you get to this third act jam-packed with action, it just doesn't move me emotionally at all. I just don't care about much of anything happening. There's not a big character moment. It's just, hey, look, the Clone Wars started. Number eight is The Last Jedi. Now, the sequence between Kylo Ren and Luke, I think, has some cleverness to it in showing kind of a Luke who's growing older and wiser and knows how to use his force trickery in ways that don't involve him just dueling it out with a big, gigantic army. I think there's some things inside of that that I really enjoy. 
The sequence as a whole, however, is pretty underwhelming for me. We have this sequence where they try and take out the big gigantic laser taking on all these walkers, gorgeously shot, but it's difficult to get too excited about a sequence that the director didn't seem all that excited about doing things with it as we have Finn going for the heroic rescue. They're like, oh, they're really gonna go for it. We're gonna kill off the character he's gonna rescue. No, Rose is going to crash into him in the middle of a battlefield to stop him from stopping the laser. Stuff like that that just kind of pulls me out of it. Like you could have killed both of us by crashing into us. So, when you put all those things together, it just made for a pretty frustrating little sequence for me. There were some moments, some story, some character stuff with Ray, the little tease at the end with the children that had a little bit of spark to it, but especially that speeder section, I just thought was very off-putting. Then we have the Phantom Menace. This one is so frustrating for me because the actual final battle between Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, and Darth Maul is fantastic. That's like top three material because you have death, you have Obi-Wan stepping into his role, fantastic choreography, seeing Sith, Jedi in their prime, double-sided lights double, double lightsaber, fun stuff. And then running right along with it, you've got Jar Jar Binks jumping on space tanks and like dropping balls and blowing things up and then getting droids head stuck on his foot and blasting people. Like it's cutting back and forth between those two things. And then up in space, you've got Anakin accidentally going in a spaceship, accidentally saving the day. And it's not that like he's using his abilities. It's like, whoops, I got stuck in a ship and it just pulls you right out of it. There's so many great things in this final battle and so many awful things about inside of this final battle. So I put it right there in the middle because the two things balance each other out just a little bit for me. But man, I just wish they could have focused in on the part that was awesome about this final battle. Next up, The Force Awakens. This is another one that's not quite as good as I think it could be. I think it has all the pieces for great Star Wars final act but never fully lives up to the potential. So in the midst of it, we get the death of a beloved character at the hands of his own son. So ultra dramatic, highly emotional, heavily progressing the character of Kylo Ren forward in his path to darkness. But the actual action inside of it um, is good, but it's never quite great. J.J. Abrams, both with his space battles, I always feel like they're a bit like visual noise. There's a lot of things happening, but it's not super clear exactly what you're supposed to be excited about. And so they're, they're, it's like, oh, this looks awesome, but I'm not fully invested inside of it. And then his lightsaber duels have a little bit of like the feeling of two people swinging baseball bats at each other. And so much more the character moments inside of this one are what elevated a little bit for me as you see Ray fully start to embrace the force. You know, you have Finn deciding, even though he doesn't really know what he's doing, to chase down <laughs> Kylo Ren with a lightsaber. You have the moment where Rey gets pull, uses the force to grab it. That's the powerful stuff inside of this one that really resonates with me. Bringing us into the top five is The Empire Strikes Back. Now there's a huge gap between number six and number five. The top five here I think are all pretty phenomenal and it was really difficult for me to decide which one goes where. So with The Empire Strikes Back, you get this iconic lightsaber battle between Luke and Vader, gorgeously shot of course, some of the most, or the, one of the biggest movie twist reveals of all time at the end of it. Just even the back and forth between the two of them as Vader has a certain respect for Luke and he's just kind of toying with him. Fantastic. Um, why is it a little bit lower, not quite top three for me? Inherently, it's not, doesn't go all out on the spectacle side of things. You have that lightsaber battle, but the other action inside of it is, you know, just people running through corridors, shooting blasters, flying away from TIE fighters. It's not on the battle side as epic, specifically. Character side, awesome. Battle side, you know, intentionally much smaller scale, much more personal in nature. Movie itself, fantastic, but we're talking final battles here, and this one doesn't necessarily deliver spectacle. At number four, A New Hope. Of all of our final battles, this is probably 
the most simple by nature as you have the rebels just trying to shoot that little missile down the little exhaust pipe to blow up the Death Star. You know exactly what they're trying to do. You watch them fail in the process. It boils all down to our little farm boy who hears a little voice in his head saying that he needs to trust the force, turns off his little computer, starts relying on the force to try and make this shot happen. Darth Vader gets his sights on him. And then our rogue who didn't want to be a part of this battle comes in the last minute to take out the TIE fighters that are about to take out Luke and they blow up the Death Star. It's very simple in nature. The arcs for the characters aren't complex. There's not gigantic moments. They just make simple decisions at the right time that ties into the arc that they had in the film. Han, the guy that doesn't care, really does care. Luke, the boy, farm boy with all the potential in the world, decides to embrace the legacy of his family, turn off the computer, and use the force to shoot. Um, and take out the Death Star. So simple, it doesn't necessarily have all the flashiness, obviously the graphics inside of it, either version of it that you've seen are dated by modern day um, standards, but it just works for its simplicity and just having this great powerful moment of victory where good triumphs over evil, where our characters make the choices they need to make to be the people they need to be. Real quick before I give you my top three, remember to share your picks down below in the comment section. Also, once this video is done, you can check out my other Star Wars rankings up right here in this video. Lightsaber duels, the movies, a bunch of other fun stuff, the villains. If you've enjoyed this video, there's so something else in there that you'll enjoy. In third place is Rogue One. Now, I absolutely love the third act inside of this film. It can be a little bit clunky getting there, but once they actually go on the mission, everything just takes off. You have a fantastic space battle. I think one of the best space battles of all time. They even did some fun stuff where they brought in some footage, unused footage from A New Hope inside of it, which is a pretty cool little touch, but you just have fantastic shots of these people desperately trying to open up the gateway so they can get the files inside of it. Down on the ground, you have kind of this actual Star Wars battle inside of it. Like we haven't really seen this type of big open battle since maybe the Hoth sequence um, 35 years beforehand. And so just a very cool little um, battle on the ground, putting the war into Star Wars. You have a heist element inside of it where they're trying to get these files and send them just in the nick of time. It has massive cost inside of it as Everyone that we've known to grow and love inside of the film ends up dying by the time the credits roll. So it actually treats war like war in that regard too of there are massive casualties. It's not just that maybe one hero dies in the process or someone sacrifices themselves. The whole cast dies inside of this one. And then to close things out, you get this awesome tense sequence as they're desperately trying to get these files through a ship just in time as Darth Vader starts just like plowing guys down, wiping them out, force slashing the whole deal, all leading straight into this nice little prologue straight into A New Hope. Such a fantastic third act to a movie. Like, I can't think of too many examples of when a third act has so elevated a film for me uh, and just made me enjoy it so much more than I enjoyed the rest of the film. Our runner up, Revenge of the Sith. Now this is a film that had the advantage of just built into it having some great tragedy. Going into the original trilogy, we know that two of our Jedi are gonna go off into seclusion and that Anakin kind of turns into a bad guy. And this is where we get to see the tragedy of all of that unfold. And it goes all full out on the spectacle side of things, not necessarily big battle type stuff with, but Jedi and Sith going all out full force, both in the Yoda Palpatine sequence, where you're seeing these two masters use all of their tricks on one another, and then two friends, two brothers duking it out um, on a lava planet as the whole thing starts to collapse on them. You just feel the betrayal. You feel the failure. You see Anakin just go, go full Vader in many different regards and then, well, kind of burn to death on a planet or almost to death on a planet. So many great, like when it comes to just meticulous choreography and like two actors going for it. You see that here and maybe people would say it's too choreographed. 
but they're Jedi. Like that works for what this film is. It's so quick moving, so many different elements tied into it. And then you just feel the gut punch of all the emotion of this Republic crumbling as an empire is formed and two of our heroes must go off at the end of it all. But coming in in first place for me is Return of the Jedi. Granted, some of you don't like the Ewoks and that inherently for you will just drop this one way down on the list. I've personally never had a problem with the Ewoks. So for me, I just take that as one more element inside of a great final battle that kind of closed out a fantastic trilogy and had some great moments of redemption, good versus evil, all of it. On the Ewok front, it's a little bit kind of a classic story trope, especially over the last 30 years after this movie came out. You know, it's it's Dances with Wolves, it's Pocahontas, it's The Last Samurai, it's Avatar. It's that whole go primitive plot line where the simple people, indigenous people battle the big um, people, uh, Imperials coming in to take over their planet. It's a classic formula that we've seen many times before. So I think it kind of works on that level and Little animals in a forest, I'm sure, are very powerful creatures. My dog, who's only 90 pounds, very strong guy, so I imagine Ewoks are too. Outside of that, I think the space battle is the best space battle that has ever been put on film. Uh, I love the look of the models, the core, like the way that they staged everything, the way the ships are flying between ships. I mean, they just absolutely took the best of technology, did everything they could with it, and you know exactly what the objective is for the pilots at each and every given moment. Whether they're just trying to survive, whether they're trying to take out something in the middle of it, whether they're trying to get out before it explodes, it's all clear objectives and she can go on this battle. And part of that is also seeing Lando have his own redemption inside of it and get to be the leader, getting to fly the Millennium Falcon. And then of course we have the throne room sequence where you get the final showdown between Luke and Vader, father versus son, and then the Pem uh, Palpatine, Emperor Palpatine in the background, kind of playing each of them against each other, putting little voices in their heads, trying to feed on their hate. You get redemption, you get victory, all of it inside of this one. This one for me, it's just such a joy and such an easy to watch, massive final battle. So it comes in at number one. If you've enjoyed this video, I've got more Star Wars rankings just like it right over there in that playlist. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.